In this video, we're going to learn about a simple and very effective debugging method called print debugging, or sometimes printf debugging. And this video is part of a series of videos on tips and tricks for beginner programmers. So one way to look at writing programs and what computer programs do is called the IPO model, where we have input, some processing of the input, and then some output. And exactly what the input, processing, and output are will vary from one problem to the next. If we're trying to find the largest number in a list, then the input would be the list itself, the output would be the largest number in the list, and the process would be the algorithm that finds the largest number in the list. And we could represent the algorithm with pseudocode or flowcharts, and this might help us to understand how the algorithm works. But when we run a computer program that we've written to implement this algorithm, and that computer program fails to produce the correct results, very often all we know is that for a given input, we got the incorrect output. And if we know that the algorithm itself is correct and that we should get a certain output for a certain input, then we know that the problem is somewhere in the implementation of the process in the code. But it's very hard to know where the problem is because we can't really see our code executing. All we usually get from our computer program is the output. Print debugging is a simple beginner friendly way for us to see what's going on in the actual implementation of the process as the code is executing so that we can figure out what's going wrong, and where. So I'll implement the algorithm to find the largest number in a list as a C program so that I can show you how print debugging works. So the first thing I'll do is declare an array, and that array is going to store 10 integers, and the largest integer in that list is going to be 9. I'll also declare a variable called length, and I'll initialize it to 10, where length is the number of elements in the array. Now the way the algorithm works is that we declare a variable called max, and max is going to keep track of the largest number in the array found so far. So we'll initialize max to the first element in the array initially. Then we're going to loop through the remaining array elements. And every time we find an array element that's larger than max, we're going to update max. So that way, by the time we've gone through the entire array, we'll have identified the largest number in the array. So we'll have four int i is equal to one, i is less than length, i plus plus, and if the array element at index i is greater than max, then we're going to update max. We're going to make this array element the new max. Then we're done, we can print out max, and that will be the largest element in the array. So we'll have printf max colon percent d backslash n, and we'll put max here. And if we save, compile, and run this, we will get a max of nine, because right now we've implemented the algorithm correctly. Let's say there's a mistake though in our implementation of the algorithm, so a simple mistake. For example, instead of greater than, we have less than here. In that case, if I save, compile, and run the program, we now get an incorrect result. We now get a max of zero. So something's gone wrong. But let's say we don't know where. Let's say after comparing our algorithm to our implementation, we don't see the problem. And that might sound silly, but that's programming. We often make very small mistakes that turn into challenging bugs to find. And the problem now is that even though we know that for this input, we should have a certain output, we should have a max of nine, all we really get now as information is this, that the max is zero. That's not a lot of information. To get more information about how the program is actually executing, we can just inject many printfs into our code. And the printfs should output important things about how the program is executing. So for example, the state of variables. So what values do variables contain? Printfs can also be strategically placed within control structures so that we know how many times a loop executes or whether or not a branch of an if, else if, else statement executes. So for example, we could put a printf right here just to make sure the initial max value is set correctly. So we could have printf and then initial max colon percent d backslash n and then output max. Now notice I'm being descriptive here with what I'm outputting, the initial max value. That's to help me understand the output I get from these printfs. And we can save, compile, and run the program and we get an initial max of four. So we know that the algorithm is supposed to set max to the first element in the array. 
So because initial max is four, and the first element in the array is four, we know that at least up until this point, our program is working as expected so far. So that gives us some useful information already. We've already narrowed down where the problem could be. We now know the problem has to be in this loop here. So now we can keep going and put more printfs in our code. Now with a loop, it's often helpful to place a printf in such a way that it executes with each iteration of the loop. So for example, at the start of the loop, we could have a printf. Now this sort of a printf would be most informative if it tells us the state of the variables that are involved in the loop. So in this loop, we have a counter variable i. So we should output i. We should have loop i colon percent d, and we can output the value of i with each loop iteration. So I'll have a new line character here, and then I'll output i. So if we save, compile, and run this, we can see that the loop does execute for the values of i from one to nine. So the loop executes nine times, and i goes from one to nine. Now we have nine elements remaining in our array after the first element, and we know those elements are at the indexes from one to nine. So the loop executing nine times and i going from one to nine tells us that this part of the algorithm's implementation is also correct. We've again narrowed down where the problem could be. We've basically figured out that these for loop statements here are working correctly. Now we could output more information with each loop iteration. So for example, we could output the value of max and the value of the array element at the index i. So we could have in here array at percent d colon percent d and then max colon percent d and we could output these values as well. So we could have i for the index here and then for the value at that index, we could have array at index i, and then we could output max as well. And if we save, compile, and run this, we're gonna get more interesting information here. So now we can see which element we're actually looking at in terms of the value itself with each loop iteration. Now, interestingly, we can also see the evolution of max. We can see that max goes from four to three, then to zero. So it seems that max is kind of doing the opposite of what we want it to do. We would expect that max might actually get larger as the loop iterates and we find elements that are larger than the initial max. But instead, we're getting the opposite behavior. Max is becoming smaller. Now, that might be enough information for us to figure out what's going wrong and to diagnose the issue, but it might not we might need more information to figure out what's going wrong with our implementation of the algorithm. But what's really important here is that we now have at least some idea where things are going wrong. We further narrowed down where the issue could be and to some extent what the issue could be. So finally, let's put a printf inside of this if condition here because this is another critical part of our algorithm where it's going to tell us when the if condition is true and what the new max value is going to be. So here we could have printf, and we'll have if, and then we'll output max, the new max. We'll have max colon percent d, and we'll output max. So we can save, compile, and run this, and now we can see in our output here something very important. We can see when the if condition was true, and we can see when the max value is changing. So here we can see that we get a new max of three when the old max was four and the element at the current array index is three. So it seems to be flipping at the wrong moment. It seems to be occurring because this number here is less than this number here. It's not occurring here when six is greater than three or when five is greater than three. But now we can see it happening here. We can see it flipping again when the current element is zero and max is three. So again, when this current element is less than the max, we're seeing this switching to a new max value occur.
So that might be enough information now to really figure out what the bug is. We might look at the condition and say, the switch is happening at the wrong time. We would look at the condition and say, oh, whoops, I have a less than, but I needed a greater than. We could put it in, save it, compile it, run the program, and that works correctly. And now we do get a max of nine. And we can see the program working correctly now as well. We can see where, where it was broken before. We are now getting the correct behavior where the max was seven, and then the current array element had a value of nine, and nine is greater than seven. So we would expect the update of the max value to occur, and it does. Now, technically speaking, we might have been able to figure it out without this printf in the if statement here, but that's not really the point. The point is that these printfs are making it easier for us to see how the program is actually executing. We can trace the execution of our program statement by statement. We can see the control flow of our program, whether or not, for example, the program entered this if statement. That's very helpful information. That's going to let us know how our program is executing. So what I generally tell students is that you can never have too many print statements or printf statements, whatever the language is, because the more print statements you have, the more you're going to learn about how the program is executing. So for example, whenever you have a loop, you can always put a printf in the loop to let you know how many times the loop body is executing. And we can also output the value of variables that are being modified by the loop to let us know what's going on with each loop iteration. Printfs can also let us know which branch of an if, else if, else control structure is executing. So if we have something like if some condition, we do this. Else if some condition, we do this. Else if some condition, we do this. Else we do this. If we have a printf in each one of these branches here, we can know which branch actually executed. So we could have a printf here and we could say something like if maybe specify the condition or something like that, that lets us know that it's this branch that's executing. Same thing here and then same thing here and then same thing here. It's generally a good idea to make the printf output descriptive. So maybe I'll put something to make it clear what part of the code is executing. So we could output else here to make it clear that this else branch is executing and try to place your print statements strategically so that you can narrow down where the problem could be. So maybe tackle your code from the top to the bottom, for example. Now there is a tool called a debugger that allows us to step through our code one segment at a time by placing what are called breakpoints in our code so that we can see how our code is executing step by step. And these breakpoints are a little bit like inserting printfs, where we can see the state of a program's execution in terms of the values of variables and what part of the code is executing. You might hear some people say that using a debugger is a better technique than print debugging because you don't have to pollute your code with a bunch of print statements. And they'll say that it's a more professional technique to use. And debuggers are a great tool to use. And if you want to be a working software developer, then I do suggest learning how to use a debugger. And I'll make a video on that topic one day as well. But for beginner programmers, learning how to use print debugging can actually be easier because it's utilizing print statements that you've already learned instead of having to learn a new tool, the debugger. Placing print statements inside your code also really forces you to understand how it's working and what's really going on. So for beginner programmers, I actually recommend sticking with print debugging for a while, at least at first. Many professional working programmers use print debugging successfully every day. So sometimes it's just a matter of preference. So often when I've seen students struggling with their code, they have no print statements in their code to figure out what's going on. And I'll sit down with them and try to show them how to add print statements to figure out what's going on in their code. Students that continue to use this technique tend to have a much easier time debugging going forward. So while this technique may not turn you into an expert programmer on its own, whenever I've seen new learners adopt this technique, it's helped them out quite a bit.
Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.